Everything is possible in life, even jiggly dough from pancake batter mess. Look at that. Pretty happy. Hey y'all, it's Martin. I'm in the studio today making a bubbly focaccia. This is a focaccia made with Ponda Cristal dough. You've made the dough before, but we've made the process even easier. So instead of dividing and putting it on a parchment and waiting, we're dumping it into a pan, which you then dimple and bake. It's easy, it's delicious, it's crisp. I wanna eat the whole thing. And just so you know, like always, the recipe is right down there below in the description. Just click on that thing and then click on the recipe. You can follow along as I make this bread. Come on, let's do it. Okay, so this is the mix for this focaccia. Now, um, just like with the Pond de Cristal, I'm using bread flour, right? Bread flour, our superpower. This is what's gonna allow us to add a lot of water and get a dough that is still high rising. So, 500 grams of bread flour. This dough is 100% hydration, which means that it's equal parts by weight, flour and water. About 500 of the flour, I've got some salt, in terms of baker's percentages, in case you're curious or interested, this is 100% hydration and it's got 2% salt. 2% is a standard range of sort of salination for a dough. 2% and then a little bit of yeast. I'll stir those together. And you know, I'm using instant yeast. I always use instant yeast as if I'm using yeast. I like instant yeast. It moves a little bit more quickly than active dry, okay? I prefer instant. That's what I recommend. There's that, and now 500 grams of water. Now, I'm gonna mix this together with this spatula, and I'm just stirring to combine, and looking to get rid of lumps. That's about all. We're not trying to develop any strength yet. The strength in this dough is going to come from time and folds, right? Time and folds. The water that we're adding to the flour, hydrates it, and then gluten starts to form in the bowl. The water is what enables that process to happen right there in the bowl. We don't necessarily need to mix it a lot right at the beginning because the flour is gonna do the work and this flour has a good protein quantity. And then we're gonna give it a lot of folds for strength. I might write a version of this at some point which uses like a stand mixer, but I don't know. Maybe it's okay to take some time and fold some dough every once in a while, you know? Slow down, y'all. Slow down and make some bread. Okay, so that's good enough. That's happy. Now what we're gonna do is put it into the container where it's gonna spend its time during bulk fermentation. I'm using one of these glass, like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a casserole dish or something like that. I don't know. It was in my cupboard. And the reason that I chose this initially was that I like that it's a rectangle shape because when I go to divide it, especially when I'm making the Ponte Cristal loaves, it makes a nice sort of four part divide, right? Similarly for this focaccia, which is gonna go into a nine by 13 pan, you can see how in its rising shape, it's already sort of moving in the direction of a rectangle. So I like this shape. But before I get it in there, I'm gonna put a tablespoon of olive oil which is just sort of like a generous coating. I don't know if you actually need to get out your gram scale for that, but you know, tablespoon. Pretty big glug of delicious green olive oil. And then spread it around in the pan a little bit, getting the sides. And we're just gonna dump this in. What a mess. <laughs> Who wrote this recipe? <laughs> so this is the mix. That's all we had to do. Stir it together, dump it into here. We're gonna give it a little bit of a rest and then I'm gonna come back and perform a bowl fold. So cover that, cover that, by the way. Don't forget to cover that. And then uh, I'll see you in a minute. I'll see you in a minute too. Okay, we mixed the dough, we dumped it into the pan. It's had about 20 minutes. And listen, if it's had 30 minutes, it's okay. If it's had 35 minutes, that's okay too. Just know that this dough is flexible. It's actually very flexible, okay? So don't feel like the second uh, the timer goes, you have to run and fold. Like, I didn't run and fold as soon as my timer went, it's gonna be okay. All right, so this fold is a bowl fold. It's obviously not in a bowl, but you'll see that the action 
mimics that of a bowl fold, right? So putting a wet hand into the corner and just pulling up a little bit and holding it in. And I just work my way around the dough. And you can see that it's got a little bit of strength, but not a ton. I can stretch it. It's certainly better than it was when we started this process, you know. It actually is beginning to feel a little bit like a bread dough. Sloppy, but a bread dough. And that's good. I didn't count. I just worked my way around the dough until I felt it sort of begin to tension and get just a little bit stretchy. So that's good. Now we cover it. Wait for 20 minutes. We'll come back and do another fold. Uh, and that one will be a coil fold. So we'll set this aside. Okay, 20 minutes are up. First coil fold. The coil is a nice fold because it's a stretch and then sort of a fold over. We're almost wrapping the dough around itself to create tension, right? So for the coil fold, what I'm gonna do is with wet hands, I'm gonna go into sort of the middle of the dough or sometimes what I call like the waist of the dough, lift up and then just roll it onto itself. And then I'll turn my hands about 90 degrees and do it again on the other axis. In my container. And that's it. You can see that already the transformation has begun of this dough from that sort of sloppy like pancake batter stuff to something that's beginning to feel springy and elastic. That's exactly what we want. Uh, and it's working because of bread flour. All right, I'll see you in 20 minutes. Okay, fold number two. Dough is starting to look a little bit smoother and I see some small bubbles happening. Um, same as the first coil fold, I'm just going to go in the middle and lift and fold, and then I'll go on the side and lift and fold. It's really um, pretty straightforward, and it's honestly, it's kind of fun. I like touching this dough. I find it to be just one of the enjoyable aspects of baking bread is touching a beautiful dough. So, so up, forward, one more time. That's it. Happy dough. See you in 20. Okay, fold number three, same as fold number two. I'm gonna go into the waist of the dough, lift. I mean, look at that. It's not the thing that we were messing with a couple hours ago in terms of the sloppy, loose structure with no cohesiveness. You know, we have this beautiful, light dough starting to fill with air, happy, active, cover it up. See you again in 20 for the last fold. So, fourth fold. At this point, you can see how much strength we've developed in the dough. It's not sort of slacking out and running and filling the pan up, right? It's holding together. That's what we want. At this point, in the baker's notes for the Pond de Cristal, when you're making the loaves, I say, you can skip this fold if you want. That's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and do it, just because I wanna make sure that that final loaf is as high rising as possible. I want all that strength. But I might do a little bit gentler fold. Watch this. I'm just gonna do one. That's a good sort of middle ground, right? I added a little bit of strength, but not too much. If you feel like at this point, yours is still pretty slack, then go ahead and do the whole thing and go through that whole process. Um, but the point here is that this dough is flexible, so you can be flexible too, right? So one more bit of rest, and then we'll be back to shape, and don't forget to cover this. This dough has had its sort of bulk fermentation, right? We mixed it, we gave it its folds, and it's risen in the pan. Now we're ready to get it into where it's gonna bake, right? So I'm gonna use this uh, standard nine by 13 pan. You could also use the dark anodized Lloyd pan if you have that. I need to get this into the pan. Before I do that, I wanna add a little bit of olive oil. And I would characterize this as like a generous tablespoon, maybe a tablespoon plus like one of those dash for good measure kind of situations, okay? So I'm gonna put that in the pan, and then I'm just gonna spread it around a little bit and make sure that it's well coated. There's no oil in the base dough, which is kind of normal for focaccia. I haven't used that here. I wanted to stick with the standard Pond de Cristal formula, but adding this olive oil, adding some more on top, garnishing it a little bit further right before we bake it, trust me, there's plenty of oil and plenty of flavor in here. I'm gonna gently dump it into the pan, right? If you've made the Pond de Cristal before, you know that this is the point where I would divide it onto a really well-floured surface. I'd cut it into four pieces and then I'd place it on parchment, okay? So if you've done that recipe, you'll know what you're doing here. The only difference is that I'm gonna go straight into the pan, being as gentle as possible, 
and I'm going to gently sort of manipulate it slightly into place. I'm going to use this flexible scraper. You know this is one of my favorite tools. I'm going to use this flexible scraper. I'm getting it wet just slightly because what I want to do is I want to get this dough out of the pan in one sort of fell swoop. So I get it wet slightly. That's going to help just a little bit. And then I'm just going to pour it in, encouraging it as necessary to release and fall. And if I do my job well, it should just kind of come out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more olive oil to the top of the dough. And again, you know, a tablespoon or so. Uh, and just drizzling it across the top. Now what I'm going to do is just make sure that it's in the pan a little bit. I might just encourage it out towards the corners just a titch. I'm not dimpling. I'm just sort of giving it a little bit of encouragement to get out to the edges. Okay, that's pretty much it. Doesn't look like I did much, and I really didn't. I basically just dumped it into the pan and just gave it a little bit of encouragement towards the corners. I'm not putting the weight of my hand in there and trying to degas it. At this point, we're in that sort of don't wake the baby phase <laughs> of trying to get it in there gently, okay? Now, we're gonna cover this and we're gonna set it to rise for two hours. In the second half of that two hours, you're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven uh, just like you would for Ponte Cristal, you know, get that oven nice and hot, get your baking stone in there and get it ready to bake. Okay, cover this and then come back. Okay, look at this dough, right? That little piece of sloppy stuff that was in that bowl has transformed into something that's super pillowy and it looks like it's ready to go into the oven. There are some beautiful large bubbles on the surface. That tells me, just like with the regular Pan de Cristal loaves, that the loaf is approaching the point where it's ready to go or it's there. Basically, we're ready to load. And that's about exactly two hours uh, in a comfortable spot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drizzle it with a little bit of additional olive oil and then I'm going to dimple it. After you dimple it, if you start to sort of press your fingers into it and you feel like ah, I'm sticking to the dough a little bit, pause, get yourself a little bit of water and then come back and just make sure that you're not sort of sticking and adhering to the surface of the dough as you dimple, okay? So I'm going to try it with just olive oil. If I feel at all like it's sticking, stop. Grab yourself some water just like you would when you're folding and then come back, okay? And let's see where we are. Yeah, not too much sticking. It's good. And I see some of these nice bubbles coming up and that's what we want. Beautiful bubbling, that's what I want. I want to see these sort of little pieces coming up. And then I'm going to add a little bit of coarse salt. You know, we bake this pretty hot, so if you are going to get creative and add some rosemary or something like that, uh, just be aware that it has a good likelihood of burning, unfortunately, just because of the heat. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm feeling like a little bit of an additional drizzle here, just a little bit, just to make it really beautiful. And we're ready to go in the oven. Oven's preheated. We're baking on a baking stone 25 to 30 minutes. Um, every oven is different. I don't say that often enough. Every oven is different. You're the baker. Don't forget your job. Your job is to bake. And part of baking is nurturing is guiding the process of baking, right? So keep your eyes open, use your nose, use your ears, listen to it, everything. Every sense that you've got available, that makes you a great baker. Let's throw this thing in. She's bubbly. She's bubbly, look at that. Beautiful bubbles. Beautiful bake. As it's baked, it's retracted just like a cake would a little bit. You know, it's pulled away from the sides. I want to see that. Let's see what's underneath. I mean, I mean that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Beautiful color, right? Looks like, looks appetizing to me, which is the whole point, right? When you take things out of the oven, like how do you know when they're done? It's when they look the most delicious. And I'm, often I'm like waiting for that point where the recipe goes from like, yeah, okay, to like that sort of tipping point where you're like, okay, now that looks like something that I'm going to destroy. I'm going to eat all of that. Um, so enough talking. Let's taste it. I'm going to taste this darker one because I like a nice uh, amount of color and flavor. Should we just cut a slice? If you could eat with your ears, I'd be like eating right then. Beautiful. 
Sounds good, right? Smells like Pont de Cristal. If you've made the Pont de Cristal, it's got the similar note to it. Malty, a little bit of fermentation, a little bit more olive oil though. Really, really beautiful and it's gonna be super tender. Um, almost has this like shell on the outside, this thin, beautiful shell. And you know, some of that bubbling that Pont de Cristal is sort of famous for, right? Okay. It's crispy though, holy smokes. Really good. Amazing that you can put equal parts flour and water in a dough and still get something that's crispy, right? It's because we baked it fully. What I like to do is actually just cut strips of it and then put a plate in the middle of the table like that. And then you get your best quality um, balsamic uh, or even balsamic syrup and then Tear off a piece of this beautiful bread. My hands are like glistening from the olive oil. I should put some on my face. And then I drag it through the oil and the balsamic. And you get like a little bit of vinegar. You get a little bit more oil. You get the salt that's on the exterior of the focaccia. Beautiful, beautiful snack. Great accompaniment for any meal. This with like an entree salad, like a big abundant bowl of greens with a little bit of uh, protein of some kind. I mean, I'm super happy. Glass of wine. So that's our bubbly focaccia made from Pan de Cristal dough. Y'all, it's pretty simple. You know the process already if you've made the other bread. This is even easier. You go through the method and then instead of cutting it and putting it on a parchment, you just dump it into a pan and put some olive oil on it. Proof it, dimple it, bake it. Super easy and a delicious way to make a bread that's beautiful and crispy. Can't think of anything more compelling to eat. Thanks for joining us. This is Martin and Tucker in the studio saying we appreciate you. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We're coming along with lots more content. Thanks, y'all. Happy baking.